Welcome to Zeaholic's Little Big Physics Lab. This is my first workshop, so uh, be patient with me. And I might rush past some stuff, but that's only because I got five minutes, and uh, in all my rehearsals, I'm going to about five minutes, 30 seconds. So let's see. All right, this all started when I uh, wanted to reproduce some findings I saw on the uh, internet forums, the workshop, and I wanted to reproduce some mass experiments. So I made up a scale, I put some glass together, I put a bolt in it, and then uh, found that I couldn't detect the difference between one wooden block and two wooden blocks. If you notice here, that's a little bit backwards. I uh, set up these pads so that I could have the scales work. And sure enough, the granularity of the scale isn't good enough to detect the difference between one and two wooden blocks. I mean, if I stick a metal block on here it'll definitely tell the difference but anyway I didn't like the way that it couldn't detect that so I made this other scale with much less mass it's got pistons and rods and floaty stuff uh, that was to adjust the rod length I ended up not needing to use that but here I found I could detect the difference between a half and a full uh, piece of polystyrene. Let's see if I can get this to uh, reset back to zero. That's yeah, going to take a minute to reset. These are fine instruments. They, they take a while. Here I zoomed in, uh, broke the grid a little bit, and uh, went into the smallest possible square I could find and found that the mass of uh, the tiny squares versus the mass of a small grid square. I'm guessing it's about 7.2 because 7.0 7 is uh, not enough and 7.2, I mean 8.0 is too much. So I actually ended up making a square like this, I mean a triangle, and then subtracting so I could get quarter units by doing that. And I figured out that it's about a 7.25 is a little bit too much. Anyway, then I went over to some pendulum experiments. This was to show that the mass is independent. Uh, this is a poly and a wood and a stone pendulum. And they all follow the same period. Uh, it, the equation for this is uh, 2 pi times the square root of L over G. So as long as the lengths are exact, you could use this to find G. Uh, but notice the polystyrene slows down first. There's some sort of a parasitic force involved. It's uh, uh, less affected on the stone, though. So for that, I went in and uh, made some accurate length measurements here and timed the strobe. Then I extended the length and shrunk the length and came up with a gravity coefficient of about 0.92 uh, meters per second squared. Then I went into some piston work. I wanted to see how much a uh, piston could take. That one's obviously pretty easy because that's floaty and it doesn't go very far. Then I started getting a little more efficient with my uh, placement. I started putting them at different layers and stuff. Here's a bunch more mass. It goes out a little bit farther. Still no problem. But then look at this one. Here's a whole bunch of mass. I made it go out to 200 units, still no horizontal deflection whatsoever. These pistons are pretty rough and rugged items. And here, check this out. Look at all the mass I'm hanging on that piston. That is a whole bunch of stone. It's even two layers deep in some places. And this piston does it without fretting. It's completely off balance, too. Anyway, that piece of wood is glued to the glass in this case. The wood over here is bolted to the glass, so it's a lot more uh, movable. And I should note that if I stuck a piece of, just one piece of stone, on this scale, I'd probably break it. Let's see. See? 
something broke.